Welcome, pen pals. Today is September the 28th. It is uh, 12 noon, or just about, five minutes to, and we are starting our live presentation and official launch of the new Estabrook brand and featuring the Estabrook SD, as they call it. It's a little nickname for Estabrook. Uh, that uh, goes around in the vintage community and uh, uh, the first pen collection made by the new modern Estabrook pen company is called the SD and we're here to take a look at it today do an unboxing and show you the entire uh, set of the uh, materials and also show you a writing sample and see what you could do with this pen when you outfit it using a, a vintage Estabrook nib and the MV adapter section I know that sounds like a lot and I'll cover everything, I swear. Uh, but first we'll go over the actual packaging. And um, just to give you a little bit of background information, um, Estabrook is a brand that was, uh, uh, essentially the name has been purchased by Kenro Industries, of which uh, Kenro is known for uh, being the distributor, uh, US distributor of Monte Grappa and Aurora pens here uh, in the United States. And they've had a brand before, uh, some years ago, we used to sell it, it's called uh, Labelle, and uh, and they're trying their hand at bringing back the Estabrook brand and using their uh, combined cumul cumulative experience over the years in producing a pen that uh, writers will love here in the United States, uh, their own house brand, as you say, and bringing this brand back to uh, the prominence that it enjoyed uh, back in the earlier 20th century. So as we look at the Estabrook uh, SD box, it's a nice like cloth textured type box, has a magnetic flap, I think um, folks that have experience with, like, let's say the Pen BBS pens will kind of recognize that this is a very similar type of box. Open it up. It says America's Original Reborn. And a little bit of history about Estabrook is that it's considered to be the America's Original Pen Company based out of Camden, New Jersey, which we're in New Jersey. So it's kind of like cool that uh, this is coming back and uh, would be we're extremely proud to kind of usher this into a new era of writers. And we have the warranty cards, the established uh, 1858, estabrookpens.com. And it does mention on here that you have one year from the date of original purchase uh, as the warranty. And they're backed by the folks at Kenro, which uh, they are have a, plenty of experience handling uh, Aurora and Monte Grappa. And, uh, and also at Schaefer at one point, too, they also handled them. Uh, so any repairs and everything, I know that you'll get taken care of, definitely. So... Uh, there's that, and we have the inside of the box, which is much different than also, too, is the, uh, I mentioned the Pen BBS. This is different. It kind of, like, opens up and has a very soft, you know, felty sort of feel to everything, which really does, you know, give you a great impression right off the bat. It's not a very, it's not a cheap box. It feels, it feels like it's got some, uh, you know, some, some other dimension to it, which I think that's, uh, it's kind of how the pen is as well. I mean, it's not a, it's not a pen that's an Italian acrylic. It's not a, um, you know, it's not a, let's say a celluloid or anything like that, but it does feel extremely high quality in terms of, uh, the solidity and just the worksmanship of it. It feels extremely, uh, pleasant to hold and beautiful to look at as well. And this is the cobalt blue model with the silver trim. So the silver clip and the writing here, and then also, too, as you've got silver uh, bands that uh, precede the section here and have the barrel threads right in the middle between those two silver bands. And then you've got yourself a stainless steel Yovo number no. 6 nib. And the interesting thing right off the bat to note about this pen is that the capping, it's kind of got a, a spring-loaded uh, cap. It's called a cushion cap. And in order to cap the pen, you can't just you know screw it on. If you try screwing it without put it without pushing it in, um, it's not going to screw shut. So what you do is you push it in, and then you give it about one turn, and then it closes nice and tight shut. That's because like the slip and seal mechanism on a Platinum three seven seven six, there's kind of like an inner cap that's pushing that's going to cover this part of the the nib here to keep your point nice and fresh and to provide that additional tension to make sure your cap is nice and secure which is a really nice, it, it has like a nice kind of feel, and so it's almost as if the point is getting ejected out a little bit as you're, as you're kind of, it, it's, it's just like, it's nice to play around with. I can't really explain it. Um, another thing too, is that the, the barrel, uh, the section threads going into the barrel feel nice and secure too. I would almost kind of guess that, 
you know, if that weren't um, metal that's in there, that you could get a nice seal for an eyedropper fill. But um, definitely don't eyedropper fill this because it's got a uh, the metal is in here in the section. And you've got yourself a standard uh, Schmidt K5 converter. It's an international converter. You could pretty much fit it with any uh, plug and play type converter. Um, you know, like Pelican or Monteverde or Schmidt makes them. Um, so there's that. The uh, marble blue is just a really beautiful, it's got some iridescence, some shimmer, I mean not shimmer, but um, chatoyance in those uh, chunks of marble that are there. The uh, And then the black is a nice you know, contrast to that. And uh, just overall, the uh, you know, just the, the quality of it, the way the fit and finish is, it's just very nice. The engraving right there, Estabrook, seems like it's engraved and then filled in. And that's really the only, those are the only points. It's a very simple, plain, uh, unadorned type of pen, just that one little Estabrook and then the clip there is really nothing, you know, it's just very simply, very beautiful, um, just very elegant looking. So the box also comes with one international sizing cartridge too. And uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of extra information about the collection in general before we get into the specifics, we have also the, um, each of the pens come in a rollerball mode as well. And the rollerball does also have that cushion cap uh, built into it. And these guys have a rollerball standard type rollerball ink cartridge, which is branded Estabrook, but you can get them from many different types of brands. It's like a G2 style international rollerball cartridge, which has a little bit of cushion in the bottom. You can see that there's like a spring. And this tortoise finish is, as you can see, is partially translucent. So any of the areas that are the lighter uh, tones of like honey yellow, you could see right through and you could see that refill that's in the inside. And you can see the spring that's in the back there too. So that is really, really nice. That has a very uh, vintage and, um, I mean, it's a very on-trend sort of look. The, the half transparency, translucency is such a, is such a brilliant um, you know, design trend that's going on in pens right now. Uh, it's not completely wholly demonstrator, but yet it, it offers some view into the pen, whereas it also decorates it in a random way using those other uh, pieces of the marble as well. So with the gold trim models, you see that you'll get the Esterbrook is um, filled in gold and then also has the gold clip and other gold appointments as well. And then if this size, which is an ample size, is not large enough for you, then we have the SD oversized fountain pen. Now this oversized model only comes in the uh, black, uh, black with gold trim or black with silver trim. And you could kind of see here, I'm just comparing them side by side. You have a good amount of size difference in girth and in length. Same cushion cap. Only difference with this being that the sections, the, uh, the barrel section going to this, um, the barrel part going to the section is all uh, metal. Whereas there's like the, the, the screw threads here are... Uh, resin. But the nib is the same, Yovo number no. 6 uh, stainless steel nib. And you still have a cartridge converter system. And converters are included. So if you take a look at the pen side by side with it uncapped here, see it does give you a, a decent little bit of extra size, maybe like an extra, you know, quarter inch in length, a little bit more girth as well. I'm gonna post this and post that and compare them. And I'll read out some of the dimensions for you. So you got to I have my notes here, right over here on the side. So the length of the regular, the standard SD, the uh, the blue cobalt here, uh, that pen length closed is 5.875 inches uh, or 149 millimeters. The length with the open cap off is five inches or 127 millimeters. Then the pen length with the um, 
open with the cap posted, as you see here, is six and three quarters inches or 171.5 millimeters. The diameter at the section is 4.375, I mean, I'm sorry, 0.4375 inches or 11 millimeters. And the diameter at the cap is um, 0.94, I'm sorry, 0.594 inches or 15 millimeters. And the weight of it is uh, 0.8 ounces or 22.7 grams. The um, oversized model, this guy here, the uh, length with the open cap posted is 7.375 inches. So this is a long pen. That's a very long pen. And uh, pen length with it closed is 6.125. The length with it open, cap off, just the pen itself, is 5.375 inches or 136.5 millimeters. And the diameter at the section is just about the same because this is the same section, so it's a, four, a 0.4375, and the diameter of the cap is six, I'm sorry, 0.656 inches, or 16.7 millimeters. The weight is 1.2 ounces, so comes in at least about, I'd say like 30% heavier than the uh, standard SD model. And when I'm saying SD, uh, I don't know if maybe some people might be thinking I'm saying SD as in Sam David, but it's SD as in E-S-T-I-E, -E, and that's the name of the line here. So the, um, so the oversized one, definitely for uh, folks with big hands who like a large pen. I don't really, I, I mean, it does post. It does post enough. You have to kind of like force it on the back there, but um, I probably wouldn't write with it posted. It's just it's large enough without it being posted and it just would be way too long for my preferences but I don't know it's up to you guys so one of the awesome uh, kind of forethinking uh, points about creating this new Estabrook SD is is okay well this is a new design uh, from a company that hasn't really you know produced a, 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 a pen that is worthy of the Estabrook brand in you know 50 years so they want to create something that will bridge the modern with the vintage and i think that what they what they offered was the most important part of the pen is the nib and esterbrook was known for their range of nibs they had something like hundreds of different types of nib styles uh, from stubs and italics to uh, flexible steel and uh, manuscript types. so there was tons of different types of nibs and one of the things that they wanted to address with creating this new Estabrook is let's make it adaptable to the old Estabrook nibs. There's a lot of them hanging around on eBay. Um, there's a lot of them that are being sold by vintage pen dealers, some of which you might find at uh, the Dallas Pen Show this weekend. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of them still circulating around there, and there's a lot of collectors that may have them on their pens already. And the Estabrook nibs were known for their ability to screw out. Like a lot of pens uh, these days, uh, including Pelican and, and these uh, Yovo nibs, which are uh, fairly standard with a lot of... Uh, manufacturers these days, they 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 screw out so that you'd be able to um, screw in a, a totally different nib and uh, be able to change your characteristics of your pen from like a fine to a broad to an extra fine to uh, italics or stubs or uh, even something that's a gold flexible nib uh, that's been modified. You could do a ton of different things with uh, being able to swap out a nib that easily. So um, Estabrook was really the one of the first ones to kind of make that as part of their of their business model to swap out the different types of nibs. And um, what Kenro had done is with the introduction of Estabrook is with this with this SD is offer what's called an MV adapter section. And which I actually have this is the baggie that it would come in and this is the section itself. So it's a black section. Can't get it in a matching color like you would with the section that comes with the pen. So it, don't try to adapt it to that because this is a specially designed section that they had engineered to be able to retrofit any Estabrook uh, replaceable nib, uh, fountain pen nib. And this one that I have here, I'm just seeing if I could zoom it up for you, is the uh, is the 92, I'm sorry, 9128, and this is the uh, the extra fine flexible uh, Estabrook nib. It's kind of like the 
um, the the harder to find one that's really not. Uh, and I I popped on it on I hopped I hopped on eBay as soon as I kind of figured out that this was this was something that could be possible, and I was like, oh, I gotta try it using, uh, you know, something that's flexible because I love all types of flexible nibs. Um, so what you would get with um, the standard MV adapter kit would just be the grip and the converter. And the converter, if you noticed, if I sh if you saw that before, is actually a little bit different. The reason why it's different is that this converter actually fits this section more securely than the one that comes with the pen. So, and also too, is the extra converter is a nice idea so that you don't have to worry about cleaning converters if you're, you know, swapping out the, the nibs, uh, you know, you want to use the original one that came with the pen. You don't have to worry about cleaning this one out, but whatever, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're clean, I love cleaning stuff out just because I like to keep my stuff nice and brand new. So I don't mind cleaning it out. But um, what you would get with the just the, the adapter grip and the converter, you would just get that and then you would buy the nib separately. However, we have a stock of the ad adapter grip, the converter, and including a random vintage Estabrook nib. Now, these are random and they vary from uh you know fine points to extra fine to this is a relief uh, fine stub as you could see here and they vary so i we have a whole bunch of them they're 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 different they're, it's kind of like a uh, a random grab bag of different types of nibs but this gets you started in being able to bridge that gap between see this is this is the one of the vintage ones that originally from camden new jersey made in usa this is so so cool that you could be able to use a vintage nib in a modern pen you know it's not something that uh, that manufacturers are, are kind of willing to stand behind but um, that's what Estabrook is is doing these days so um, you would be able to take out the nib and just it, like you would with like a standard pelican type of nib or or Yovo um, you would just screw it out and then screw this one in you ink it up works perfectly fine and I got this one already inked up <clears throat> Excuse me. I have it inked up with Colorverse Gravity Wave, and I've been playing around with it. So um, we could give that a little a little test. Um, but I just wanted to explain that there's a difference between the MV section and then the MV section with the nib. Um, it's a little bit more expensive to get it with the additional uh, nib, but I think it's definitely worth it because it gets you started right away, as opposed to having to hunt around and find an Estabrook nib from a reliable seller. This already comes as a prepackaged type deal. So... Um, I think that's a really cool idea, and I love the idea of being able to bridge the gap between vintage and modern by just swapping out the nib. And I mean, a lot of pens could say vintage style, but um, not many pens could say it writes like a vintage pen. And this does write like a vintage pen because it takes the heart of the pen and allows you to write with it. And I had this open, please just note, I had this open for a while, I had it off to the camera, um, so if it has a little bit of a trouble trying to, you know, hard start or dry or a little dry flow or everything, I'm you know, going to excuse that because of the fact that I had it, I did not have it capped for a while, but, um, everything fits perfectly in there. So it fits just like having it with the original section that comes with the pen. And there you go. Now you have a modern SD with a vintage Estabrook nib. Easy as that, right? So I find that I find that very amazing. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I get excited for little silly things like that. So we could do our we could do a writing sample. Just kind of move things out of the way. Get my notebook. Just bear with me a second. I was working on a little bit of uh, flexing for the uh, doing a little demonstration for our catalog or actually our magazine, I want to say. And actually, this um, this whole landscape here is kind of a little preview of what you might see in our upcoming uh, magazine uh, that's going to be in print in the next um, next few weeks. We're going to put it to the printer and this is going to be one of the background shots that we're going to use for it. So, so I could get a little bit closer here. Yeah. Hey, Matthew. Um, so for as far as what's coming down the pipeline in the future i i i'm not privy to that information um but um but in this particular model being this is the introductory model i know 
um, Kenro has plans on that they're already starting to work on like their next phase of of different pens that they're going to introduce. So it may it may certainly be possible there would be new colors of the SD um, or maybe a whole new model entirely um, that might be uh, you know a different take on this whole concept or uh, just maybe something that might be a little bit more uh, vintage. Uh, you know, inspired by the original Estabrook. And I know that we're throwing around people throwing out like, oh, let's, let's, uh, you know, reintroduce a J or like a, a, a lever filling system. Um, but uh, I, I assure you, I mean, you've got uh, Carrie Yeager over there at Kenro and he's Mr. Fountain Pen Day. He absolutely adores um, this, this reintroduction of this brand. And I think that he's going to be working um, along with the whole team to try to uh, be as true to that original brand as possible and even do things exciting like trying to reintroduce some of the vintage uh, models in as much spirit as possible. So let's see. Uh, keep in mind, like I said, this may, this may not work uh, right away because of the fact that I had it capped, but Let's say, lo and behold, this actually is. So this is the the ninety. Was it ninety one twenty eight? Yes, ninety one twenty eight. Extra fine. Up. Oh, see, and I told you, I told you not to, not to blame me if this has a little bit of a hesitation because I did have it out without its cap for a while. Oh, don't you love that? Just starting a live video. And of course, it doesn't wanna doesn't wanna work for me right now. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right. So let's put that on hold for right now. What we could do though, I kind of anticipated that I since I had that open for such a long time, I could have had a dry start. So I don't have any water on me to kind of get that going again, but what we could do is we could fill this guy up here. So just to do some sort of writing sample, because I don't want to leave you guys with, uh, you know, without, uh, without seeing something being written down using this pen. So I got my sample of uh, color versus gravity wave. I don't know if you're seeing what I'm doing here, because I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing so I don't spill ink all over the place. I'm just drawing up ink through this sample vial here. And I don't have, I don't have a, let me see, I can use this cloth here. So I don't want to get my fingers all inky. See the hazards of doing a live show, right? Is that some th sometimes things go a little bit unexpected. And this is a medium point. Now this pen, oh, it's just, it writes like butter. It's, I, I love the, the smoothness. It's got a little hint of feedback, but since it's medium, it's mostly, it's mostly glassy smooth right from the get-go. And I mean, this, this ink too, it's just, it's a lovely, I love this uh, color versus gravity wave. It's so nicely saturated. Has good sheen when you've got it on some Tomoe River paper. Okay, about the cap. Thank you. I just want to read the question there. Okay, so the cap be prone to stress fractures and, and cracks if screwed on too tight. Well, I don't think you could really screw this on tight because essentially the, the tightness comes from that cushion 
that cushion that initially it's kind of like a, a best thing I could kind of explain it as is um, not necessarily like a, a platinum 3776 but more like a um, in in terms of the mechanics of, of capping the pen is more like a, a Visconti a homo sapiens with that hook and lock mechanism where all you have to do is just you press it in and you just give it like maybe like a full turn all the way around and then you're capped um, with that being said I feel like the you know this 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 kind of acrylic is more solid um, than, let's say, comparing it with, let's say, a Le Bon. Um, it's it's kind of in between, let's say, like a um, like a like a pen BBS acrylic and a and like a full Italian acrylic. Where I I feel like the Italian acrylics are just a little bit more solid than this, but it still feels extremely solid. Like I could probably drop this cap. Um, on on a hard surface and it definitely won't you know chip or crack on me because it just feel it just has a very solid feel to it um, but I mean that's that's kind of a thing that that you know is only over time would would tell but if if there were to be any sort of stress crack from just capping the pen you know I'm sure that you contact the folks at um, at Estabrook or at Kenro Industries and they're definitely going to be um, uh, willing to help out with that issue uh, but uh, especially with like considering that there was a issue before, um, more recently there's Monte Grappa's the uh, the Fortuna, uh, the Blue Blazers, the sections, the grip sections, um, when they got ink on them, uh, sometimes certain inks would cause the finish to start to uh, wear off that rainbow colored finish that was on there, and it would wear off in patches. So what they did, they took and they replaced them all with um, just the regular stainless steel grip section that did not. Um, that did not have that issue. So you'd still have the pen would be fine, but you would have that grip section that would be touching the ink and whatnot would be um, that stainless steel to prevent that from happening. So um, they're always very proactive when it comes to any sort of issues that could happen with uh, with pens, which I mean, a lot of it's unforeseen because you these pens haven't been around for a while. So you don't know exactly what's going to happen uh, over the extreme long term or even the short term, like a couple of years or something like that. But they're willing to stand behind it, which is, you know, what you really want um, you don't want to get into a situation where uh, you know you have a you have a pen maker or that you're buying pens uh, you know from some far off place and and then they break on you a couple weeks later and then there's no there's no support you, you try to send emails and no one's getting back to you like the, the these guys will not do that to you I know that for certain but uh, let's just do like a little bit of a, a you know a panogram or pangram It just has a beautiful flow right out of the box. And this is, and like I said, I could replace this with any Yovo number six style type of nib, easily screws out. So you have Edison, you have um, uh, nibs by other manufacturers that are the number six Yovo size that, you know, have the different engravings on it, like a Franklin Kristoff, for example. Those easily screw in, screw out, bing, bang, boom, you are done. And you have a a new writing instrument that uh, has a has a different tip on it. So uh, I'm just seeing if there's anything else I haven't covered. If you guys uh, do have any questions, feel free to shout them out in the uh, in the chat box here. Uh, or you could also send me if the if the broadcast is over and you're watching a replay. You could also send us uh, a message or leave a comment below. Now I could probably go with writing this um, posted or unposted. I'm writing posted now. Just it has a good weight in hand because it's acrylic, so it's not going to be too back heavy considering the cap itself is acrylic and just has the one uh, metal part being the clip. I can see if maybe we can get this guy to go. Uh, still won't go. <laughs> oh, man. 
I tell you, just the luck sometimes. Just the luck. Just to be able to... I just want to show you just what this is capable of doing here. And it just... Just did not... Uh, does not want to cooperate on me here. Yeah, I could use... I could use like a little bit... Just like a little bit of water would probably get this going. But uh, unfortunately, I don't have that at my... Um, at the ready at the moment. So um, I guess that will uh, close things up. And uh, that is the Esterbrook SD with the, uh, with like I, like I mentioned, the, uh, the MV conversion kit that you could purchase to include any uh, Esterbrook nib on there. Um, in terms of uh, using some long-term inks, I would go with any brands that are that have been around for the long term. Let's say like Pelican, uh, Waterman, uh, Parker's are good too. Uh, uh, some of the super saturated inks that are out there, and some of the boutique inks like uh, like let's say the um, the Noodlers inks and whatnot. You know, I I tend to kind of want to stay away from those when it comes to looking for like longevity purposes or or to or to use safely in vintage pens. Um, so I would just stick with the the brands, the tried and true brands, that have been around for uh, over a century, um, and uh, and and go with those. That's that's kind of your safest bet. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely look around for reviews too, because some people have have you know kind of gone through that and tested certain inks before. So if there's a color that you like, um, just look for reviews on it and and maybe ask somebody if they've used it in a uh, in a vintage pen or or have any, have had any issues with uh, uh, any pens before getting clogged and whatnot. So. Um, again, this is the Esterbrook SD collection. It's now available at goldspot.com. It is available uh, immediately shipping today. We have every uh, every uh, pen model in stock, and we don't have the broad nibs yet, but uh, we anticipate those will be coming in next week. So you could shop all the rollerballs, the fountain pens, and the oversized fountain pens. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in and hanging out with us on a Friday afternoon. I hope that you guys have a great weekend and uh, stay safe and stay inky, my friends. Take care.